The Cheshtia Silsila was added a new dimension by the contributions of Mir Sayyid Ashraf Jahangir Simnani, who came from Simnan, a town in Persia, at the age of 23. The Sayyid, who settled in the hamlet of Kichocha in Uttar Pradesh, came here after visiting the Sufi centers in Iran, Iraq, and Central Asia, where he had been the disciple of Alauddola Simnani, the Central Asian Kubravi saint. Another Chishtia saint, Sayyid Gesu Daraz of Gulbarga, adopted views contrary to those of the earlier Chishtia saints. Sayyid Gesu Daraz, who came to Gulbarga, a town in the south of India, at the age of 82, was one of the most distinguished among Sheikh Nasiruddin Chirage Dilli's disciples. His books are today housed in the library at Gulbarga. The Dargah also houses other relics of the Prophet, may peace be upon him, which are only opened once a year for thousands of pilgrims to see. The relics are the athar or effects of the Prophet. May peace be upon him. They include the footmarks of the Prophet. May peace be upon him. A ring worn by Ali and the calligraphic writings of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, the grandsons of the Prophet. May peace be upon him. It is not, however, known when and how these relics came to Gulbarga. He has been the first uh, Sufi in India to have propagated um, non-pantheistic uh, Sufism uh, for which uh, Ahmad Sir Hindi is uh, known and he, has, he is sort of a precursor to Ahmad Sir Hindi. The Naqsh Bandia Silsila is still one of the most popular in Central Asia. This order came into India through Khwaja Baki Billa of Kabul, who had spent considerable time at Samarkand. It was left to his disciple, Ahmad Sarhindi, to make the Naqshbandi Silsila popular in India. Ahmad Sarhindi gave the Silsila a distinctive ideology, a motive power, and an effective organization. A prominent Naqshbandiya who left his mark on the Muslims of Kashmir was Khwaja Khwand Mahmud Naqshbandi, who had descended from one of the disciples of Khwaja Bahuddin Naqshband. Khwaja Khwand performed ascetic exercises at the tomb of Khwaja Naqshband. Thereafter, he was given the responsibility of doing missionary work for the Naqshbandiya Silsila. By divine act of God, the Khwaja found himself in Kashmir. The Khwaja's name spread far and wide, until today he is revered as the greatest Naqshbandiya saint in Kashmir. Amidst lush green trees, the green tomb dargah of Shah Waris at Deva Sharif brings into its fold the vibrant traditions of Hindus and Muslims alike. Shahwaris, being a 20th century saint, was in fact liberal in his belief and welcomed people of all religions into the fold of Varsis, an order established by him. On the urs of the saint, people merge at the Dargah in a feeling of oneness. In fact, the traditions of Hindus and Muslims are amalgamated such that there is no difference. It was devotion that was propagated rather than the orthodox tenets of Islam. Sama or Kavali 
was a form of devotional prayers which attracted Hindus as they were familiar with kirtans and bhajans. <laughs> Sufism today is an amalgam of the tenets of the various rivers of thought that merge into an ocean of belief. This ocean of belief is reflected in the saints of the 20th century. <laughs> 